the Vietnam Veterans Memorial soon after its dedication in 1982 became known among Vietnam veterans as simply the wall. Of course, we also referred to our service in Vietnam as being in the Nam, and we constantly spoke of how soon we would be able to return to the world. Uh, the American War in Vietnam lasted 10 years, or 12 years, or 20 years, depending on the definition. But for most of us, it lasted only for as long as our own personal tour of duty. In any event, at the official end of the Vietnam War, in May of 1975, over 58,000 men and women had died there, with several hundred thousand wounded. Discussing the specific numbers and why they vary would take hours and would resolve nothing. But we do know that many, many more Vietnam veterans have died from both the physical and the emotional effects of the war since its conclusion 45 years ago. There is an especially apt saying that there are no unwounded soldiers in war. And it is clear that the effects of Agent Orange and PTSD are still front and center for Vietnam veterans alive today. On a personal note, it's a bit of a strange coincidence for me that it was exactly 50 years ago this, this month in May of 1969 that I returned home here to Casper, Wyoming after having served 14 months in the 2nd Battalion 7th Cavalry Regiment, 1st Cavalry Division. In approximately 72 hours, I had left my unit, my friends, and my comrades in a rubber plantation northwest of Saigon and out processed through Binois uh, to Cameron and flying back across the Pacific to Travis Air Force Base and Oakland Army Depot where I was issued a brand new U.S. Army Green Class A uniform with all the patches, ribbons, stripes, and tags. I wore that new uniform for only a matter of hours only while I flew uh, commercial from San Francisco uh, to Denver and back home here to Casper. As soon as I walked in the door of my parents' home, I took that uniform off, stuffed it in my duffel bag, and didn't look at it again for the next 10 years. Why? Because while well, my personal tour of duty ended in 1969, clearly the war didn't end then. It continued through the Vietnamization of the war in 1972, and for some U.S. military personnel, it continued until the fall of Saigon on April 30th, 1975. And I and my fellow Vietnam vets and all of America and the world watched that tragedy on television. When I came home to Casper, I had a number of emotions, none of which I felt I could share with anyone. I felt a sense of having left the field of battle and deserted my friends still there. I felt a kind of survivor's guilt for having come home virtually unscathed while more than 5,464 soldiers of my unit, the 1st Cavalry Division, uh, ultimately perished in Vietnam and their names are on that wall. I honestly questioned the value of my 14 months of service in Vietnam because upon my return, Right here in Casper, Wyoming, where I had graduated from high school and enlisted in the U.S. Army, I was told by the VFW and American Legion that my Vietnam comrades and I were not eligible to join because the Vietnam War was not an official war, but only a conflict. That later changed, but those were tough days. None of this changed during my studies here at Casper College or the University of Wyoming, 
over the next eight years. I and other Vietnam veterans kept our heads down, watched our six, and tried not to draw attention to the fact that we were veterans of the Vietnam War. It really was not that we returning Vietnam veterans did not receive recognition or welcome home, homes or parades. It was more to the point that we sensed that it was our very presence among them as Vietnam veterans that made people at the very least uncomfortable. Americans did not want to hear more about the war or the warriors. It was as if they felt they knew all they needed to know from their TV sets. It wasn't until 1982 or so when it became clear that the Vietnam Veterans Memorial was going to be a reality, not just proposed or planned, but actually funded by private donations, not federal funds, that Vietnam veterans began to struggle to both proudly self-identify as Vietnam vets and to come together uh, publicly as Vietnam vets. We, be, we began to articulate our feelings that while we had gone over as strangers, we came back as brothers. <coughs> Until Vietnam vets began to wear baseball caps or patches or pins, it was not at all common to do so at that time. But soon, World War II and Korean War vets began to do so also. The wall although initially highly controversial, became much more than a memorial. It became a tribute and a remembrance of those that served and had made the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam. Perhaps some who view it only consider the numbers, but to those of us who lived through and survived that war and to the families and friends of these men and women who did not, we see not only the numbers, but we still see the faces and we feel the pain of their deaths. And until we too pass, we remain haunted by the wall because they were our comrades, our friends, our classmates, our fathers, husbands, and sons. But ultimately, the wall is most often a healing place, a symbol of closure and reconciliation. To Vietnam vets, it is the ultimate personification of our brotherhood. Over 400 years ago, William Shakespeare, in his play, Henry V, penned what is now called the St. Crispin's Day speech. The setting is this. It is the Battle of Agincourt in the Hundred Years' War between England and France, and the English forces are far outnumbered, five to one. The Earl of Westmoreland wishes he had more men in his command, those that sat idle in England. No small irony there. But King Henry firmly insists that his men should instead be happy that there are so few of them to share the honor in the estates. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall never go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. The words of King Henry still resonate in me today, from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. Thank you. <laughs>